Welcome to MacroCode. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. So on today, we are going to proceed with our Blazor web app. So we created our simple Blazor web app. And you can see we created our model here. Then we have our app settings. We connected this to our SQL uh, database. So if I just open our database, here is our database. Then we have some tables. We have the roles, the normal default SPNet tables. Then we have now our student table that we just created. So if you come to our project, we have the student uh, class here. We have defined the ID, the first name, middle name, last name, address. So we can have this as a required. So I just copy this here. So this is required. And have this as required. Required. Can have this as required. Required. Then you can have this as required. So we've just created our class here. We have connected this to ASP to our database. Then the next thing that we want us to do is to add some packages. So when you come to our packages, we have some packages. I think we have uh, we had actually added. We have SQL Server tools. You can also add. Uh, so let's click it. So I'm going to stop our project. So let's add some nuggets. So I'm going to add a design. So I'll just do design. You can do Microsoft. Then I'm going to install, sorry, Microsoft. Entity framework. So I'm going to do design let's see we can have the name so i'm going to install uh, code generator design so i'll install version 8 accept that then uh, let's see if we have entity framework code so we can have entity framework so if we're using entity framework we need to install this so apply so there we are. So, so we've actually installed now SQL Server and the framework core. We have our tools, code generator, and we also have identity. So that is it. So the next thing that I want us to do is to create. So the next thing that I want us to do is to create a, a shared library. So I want us to create on our project so i want us to create our project then we say so let's just do so let's just do here new then add new project so i want us to create a shared library shared project so Let's see, class library. So I want us to create a, so I want us to create a class library. Then I'm going to say students management dot shared. So we'll just create that, then uh, new. I'm using .NET 8, create. So there we are. So we now have our shared library. So I want us to also migrate some of our uh, our folders. So I want us to move this folder from our students management to our shared library. So I'm going to paste this here. So we'll have our students folder, but now this will be dot shared, then models. So there we go. So if we come to application db context, this will now need the shared. Don't know if it will get it. So you can have these. So we need to have these as a, so we need to add. So let's just add the let's remove this. Then if we hover here, 
we can add the reference we can add the reference to shared there we go so we, we are now getting this from our shared library so we have now a model on the shared so that we can actually reuse it if we if they need so the next thing that i want us to do is uh, we had actually uh, done the configuration on our spnet that is our program to cs file we had our default connection connecting to our database and we are actually now using uh, sql server then you can see here we have our email sender so so the next thing that i want us to do is to clear to create our student uh, repo, rep, repository so to create our repository i want us to come to our shared library then i want us to create a folder so this folder we'll call it a uh, student repository so you can create this as a repository student repository then i want us to create a for a class here so we'll name these uh so i want us to create not a class but an interface so an interface and i'm going to name these uh i student repository i student repository then after we've done that so i'll do here public so on our student repo i want us to have some tasks here so we'll do task sorry so task then student so so we, we want to create uh the want to add a student so let's say add student async so here we will pass our student then this will be student then we can copy this we can have a want to update so we'll say update update student we also do another one for deletion so we'll say delete delete student so the next one is to get all students so we are getting so we'll get a list of students so see this will be we need to get a list of students then here we'll say get get all students so get all students a sync here we, what are we passing we don't want anything here on our delete you can actually pass a student id so we'll do student id so the next thing is to get a student by an id so we'll do here so this will be single record so we'll get student by by id sync so there we go so here we'll also pass uh, student id so we'll do student id so after that so the next thing is now we want to implement these uh these uh report the, the, to create the service so on the service i'll not be having this on our shared library but i want us to have it on our on our server so i'll create here a folder called implementations or we call it services call it services so on our services i'm going to create a class implementing our interface so we'll do here student so we'll do student repository in this student repository dot cs so this is our class so we now do i student there we go so here i want us to implement so if we just over here we can implement our interface so we've just added all the Method. So the next thing that I want us to do is to create a constructor here. So I want us to create a constructor for student. There we go. 
then we need to have our application DB context. So I'll say I'll just do uh, then here we'll say application DB context. Here should be uh, I can say context. Then here I want us to implement it. So we'll just do application DB context. Then here, then I'll just assign this. Let's say this dot that one. So there we go. So for the add, so we need to now bring in some logic to our service. So for the add one, here we have re we are receiving a student uh, model. So I want us to first check. So if we say if uh, student that we we throw three and null uh, exception, then we say uh, we can define variable student say is equals to can say this student record say is equals to await uh, context dot product say context dot student so students so here so here I want us to I want us to add the students so so here we'll say so you can say variable new student equals to say context dot add so we'll have our student here so we'll do that then we'll just do await then save changes then we can even return we can return the student that has been saved so we can return this new student so that will save our so we say dot student dot add then you can say this dot entity then you can save so you can do that so once we've added so the next thing is to delete so we are receiving a student id so i want us to do we need to get that uh student so we'll say student we'll get the student uh we can do first or default sync and you can actually pass our id so you can say student id that way and you can have here yeah, await. So if we do that, await. So this one should. So here we can do. So we'll say. So we can do this. You can say that ID equals to student ID. Let's say x is to x. And just pass that. Can just do where. Let's just do where. Then you can say x dot id equals to student id. Then you just do first or so default. So if we do that, we're able to get our student. And this student that we've got here, we need so if it's null, you can say if it's if that is null, we can return a null argument exception. But if it is so you can actually return here. We can say instead of that you can return you can return null. But now after that we can say our our context. We need to remove it, and we can now save our changes. Then we can return the student that we've just uh, removed. 
So this one will now remove our student. So we can, this should not be nullable. Yeah, this can be nullable, so that's fine. So after we've done that, I want us to do another one to get the list of uh, students. So to get all the list of students, we need So here, we'll just come here, then we say, so just do that. Then we do variable, say students, equals to await, equals to await, wait dot, and we say context, dot students, dot, to list. So you can just get all the students and we can now return it here and return all our students. So this will give us all the students. Then we can get a student by ID. So you can actually reuse this, the one we've just deleted. So we can get here student by ID. So you just do that. So we can do student. So what is the issue? So I want us to single. So I just define this single student. Then I want us to get student. So we'll say that. Yes, it was fine. So we need to get the student, and this can be nullable. We can just we can even change this. Let's not make it nullable. So if it returns now, this should be fine. Let's make them nullable here and here as well so if we do that so you're able to get single student with the id that we've returned then on update we are getting the student record so you can actually use what we did here on return so if we do that you can actually return null so we'll make this, so we'll say return, return null, this can be nullable, and we can make this a sync. So here, we can do a wait. So I want us to update. So we are updating this, so, so then we, we can actually save the changes. So we can now get our student and we can return our, let's remove that. Can make this a sync. See, we can remove that. So on our delete, can do away with that. So that is fine. So I want us now to create a controller so we have our update student function get student by an id you can remove this so let's just retain it as it is then as you can see everything looks good so i want us to create a controller inside our students management so we'll create a folder then call it controllers so i'll create a controller for student so i'm going to create a controller for student so i'm just going to create an empty one so it's actually an an empty api controller so i'll just create that then i'll say this is a student controller so you can see this is my student controller now you can have my constructor then we do that so i now have my api 
controller, this is API controller. So I want us to inject our student uh, repository here. So I want us to do private uh, read only. Then you can do I student repository. Then I can do I can do underscore student. I'll just take this. Then say here underscore. Then I can close it. Then I can actually have this here then say student repository. So inside here, I'll just do these a student. This it will be underscore student repo, it should be that way. So our first method here is to now get all the students. So I'll just do public. So I'll say public async task. Sorry, task. Then I'll do action result. So I'll do that. Then within here, I'm expecting a list of uh, students. So I'm expecting a list of students. So then I'll say get all students async. So this is my method. Then I'm expecting to do something here to return a list of students. So I'll say well, students, students equals to await. So this is await. Then I'll say uh, student repo dot get all students. So this is this. Let's just rename our function here. It will be get all students async. Let's change also our implementation service. So we should change here to get this one. Sorry, we should be get students. So that solves it. So if we come to our controller, we should have these as get get students, get all students. So once we have all our students, then what do we do? We return. We do that. Close it. Then we return K with our students uh, list. So at the top here, we can define the root. So I'll just say this is HTTP get. And uh, we need to pass this to, so you can say this is uh, all students. So once we do that, I'm okay. I want to recopy this here. Then I want to, I want us to get single student. Then I'll say get single student. This is giving us only a single student. So I'll do that. Then uh, remember we are passing an ID. So here, we need to do this, then we pass an ID. So I'll just do that. Here we are passing an ID. Then here we also passing an ID. Sorry. So we're passing an ID here. Then here we'll now get student by ID. Then we pass the ID that we've just been given there. Then remember, this is now a student record. Move that. So we return a student. So we are able to get now a single student record. So the next one is to add our product. Our So the next one is to add our student. So I'll say add students. So I'll just say add student. This will be get single student. Then this will be... So I'll call this get single student async. Then I'll go, I, I call this add. So I'll say add new student. Add new student async. So here we are passing our student model. Then here we have that. Then on our repo, we are going to have say new student is equals to add student then we are passing our student 
then you are able to return student here. So once you've done that, so the next one is to delete. So we need to define our delete. So to do that, so we'll define here. So I'll just copy this. Then I can do uh, delete, delete student. We need to pass an ID. Then we can say here delete, delete student sync. We, re we only require an ID. So I'll also say delete student. Then I'll pass an ID here. Then delete. So I'll say this is deleted student. Then I'm all, uh, I should be able to return now my student that has been deleted. So that is it for, uh, we've, we've now created a student repository. You can see we, 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 we have our report to add student here. We can actually return null instead of that. So you can say return, sorry, return null. So this should be return null. So, so this will add our students to the database. We have one here to delete our student. We have one to get our students list. We have one to get a student by an ID. Then we have this one to update our student. Then we've just uh, done our, so we have our interface here to add students, update students, delete student, get student by uh, all students, then get student by an ID. Then we now have our API here that will be doing our magic for us. So that is the basic implementation that we had to do. So the next thing that I want us to do is to create our So we have we've now created our controller here. So we have our API here. But now on our client, we need to create our our service that it will be consuming and now calling our API here. So what we need to do, I want us to create a folder. Then we call this uh, service services. So here I'll just create another class then i want to call this student service service so in our student service i want us to implement our repo that we have here so remember we have our so we have our so we can do hi student repo c sorry so we need to add this stuff. So we need to add the reference. There we go. And you can now implement our interface. So that is it. So I want us to have our constructor here. So I'll say just do public student service. Then you can do that. Then once you are done with that, so I want us to use a uh, HTTP client, so you can do private, read only, then I'll do HTTP client, that way, you can have this here, then you can do HTTP client, then we have these as these.http client, you can do that. So, on our add product, we are going to get now our student here then for the implementation here we are going to do variable student equals to await then we'll do http so i'm going to use this http dot so these are posts so i'll just do post i don't know if we define that on our controller here so this one should be the add one should be HTTP post. So this one should be HTT post. And when adding a student, we don't, what we need is not the ID. So I think there's something we missed there when you are creating the add student here, you should not have this. 
should not have this so you just do http post then we do that so on our service here we should now do add student you're expecting that then we do http post then we need now we need now to so you can say post post as json so you'll say post as json async then we can do api so here we can do api then we say student then what is our endpoint we say add student so then this one we should supply it with our model so we'll say student the data that we want to add there so after you've done that so we'll say add so this will be new student then let me just do that then our response will be so you'll need to get a response so our response will be equals to await then we say new student dot content dot read string so this we need to read from json async so i'll say read from json async and we need to map this to our model so that we're able to get it so we'll say student student then we need to do that so then we need to return our response so we need to return our response here so that is it so this response might be null so that's fine so the next one is to is to delete let's do the get all students so here let's just copy this then we'll say all students so you want to get all students so you'll say http so this one is uh you need to say this is a sync you say http then you we, are, we now get a sync then api student then we need to say we need to say get a sync then this is, should be all students so let's confirm our endpoint and our controller should be all students so come to our service this should be students then here we are not passing anything then our response should be all students then we need to convert this to a list because you are getting them as a list then we now return our response but to get a single student by an id here what we need to do will say single student single student we need to do this as a sync then we say http get then student will do single student let's confirm our endpoint here it will be single student come to our service single student then we'll say single student dot content read from json then we just need uh, a student here then we'll return the response so the next one that we need to do is to update so i'll just take the one that we did for adding so i'll do that and then here i'll also do but now this is a post so i'll just do a sync here then update student i'll now do update student confirm our endpoint confirm our endpoint where is our update student we don't have that method here let's check our our interface let's check our interface so we have delete update student which will be on our service 
we have add student delete student get student by id update student there we are but on our controller do we have that so yeah we should actually do it so we need to do it here so i'll just add this here then say update student this will be update student so we are updating that so for us to update students we need to do update student async then you can say this is update student and you can return the updated uh, student record so that is it so if we come to our service we can now uh, do post then update students confirm our endpoint it is update student our service here should be update student then we pass our student record to be updated then we read from our students so so after we have done that i think that is now fine so this is the service that you are going to use it on our on our application so it will be interacting with our api here so you've just created an api consuming some of the uh, details that we've done so we've we actually we have actually done our student repository we are actually using it here so the next thing is let's come to our program.cs class i want us to add now our service so here i want us to add our service so we'll just do builder.services dot uh, add scoped then we can now provide our service so i'll just do student uh so we'll just so we'll just do i student repository comma then we'll just do student repository here so and in using service then i can do that so so we've actually registered now our service there then the next thing that i want us to do is uh, to define our api so to define our api remember we have been using so here on our on our controller on our service here on our service where is our service here we are we are actually using http client that is under client service so we are actually using http client so we need to define something so we need to define our service within our client so if you come to our app settings.json so i want us to add uh, a service so i want us to add it here so we'll do base address so our service that is our api so our api will be so let's confirm let's launch our app then we confirm our link so you can do that or even come to launch settings then you're able to see our link here so you're able to get our our link here so something went wrong yes so let's come to our app settings here we need to have uh, we need to have done this so let's confirm but you can actually confirm that under app settings then https you can see there is application url here for the profile you have it here so these i'm expecting this to be our url so let's confirm so our app is there you can see this is a 7226 you can also find it here you can see on our properties then launch settings you will see the, the the link there so for us to update it i'm going to paste this link here so this is our link so this is our link for the api so we are for us to use that link we need to now register that uh, api on our application so what we need to do come to our program.cs then i'm going to register our http client here so i'll just do builder dot uh, services dot uh, add scoped so i'll do that then i open the brackets so i'll say http 
equals to I'll do that then I say new HTTP client then I want to open this sorry I want to open this then inside here I'll define my base address my base address I need to give it the URI so I'll say builder dot configuration dot so I'll say dot get section so I want us to get a section for and we'll have to pass our value so the value that we are going to pass is the base address so this should be base address then on our app program.cs i'm going to pass this as the value and on this base address we just want the value so going to do that then we need to close our service here so that is it so we've just done that so we, we've actually registered now our base address on our project so so the next thing also that i want us to do is on our students management dot client on our program dot cs so here i also want us to register our service so i'll just do builder dot services dot add scoped then i'll do i'll do i student repository then i'll also do now my service i'll actually have this service here this is the one that i'm going to use so i'll just come here then i have this then i do that and close it so we've now registered our service that we are going to use it then another thing is uh, we also need the http address so i'll just do here builder dot services dot add scoped then i need to do http so you can actually copy what we have done at the top here so i'll just copy this so let me copy this come to our program.cs for the client then now on the uri i'm going to do builder dot then i'm going to do host environment then i'm going to do base address so then i don't need this so that will suffice so just host dot uh, so we are going to have that which come from the local host so our api is actually hosted within here so you can see we are going to use that so i think that is it for the configuration so the next thing that we are going to do now is to interact with our razor components so but that is now uh the, the interesting uh, bit of our project so for today's video we are going to read there so if you're new to this channel consider subscribing like the video comment down below and you can also get the uh, source code on our git repo on the link below so subscribe like the video share and recommend for others uh see you in our next video bye